This is a real premiere, a world premiere, attracting leading bankers from all over America who were invited to Poughkeepsie to witness the world's first public demonstration of a total demand deposit accounting system. The IBM laboratory at Poughkeepsie was the focal point of this nationwide gathering. To it, there converged over 600 of the country's leading progressive bankers, eager to see, evaluate, and learn for themselves the new paper handling capacity of IBM Series 1200 equipment. These executives who were invited to enter the lobby, where they exchanged ideas, viewed the preliminary displays, and discussed them with IBM representatives until Mr. F.G. Rogers, manager of the IBM banking department, opened the proceedings. Uh, prior to the establishment of magnetic ink character recognition as the ABA common language, a variety of approaches were being planned by the manufacturers to solve the check handling problem. And we, along with the other manufacturers, heard the plea for uniformity. And through the cooperative effort of the manufacturers, the printers, the ABA, and yourselves, magnetic character sensing became the banking language. Now, the point I want to make is this, that even though we are on common ground or a common language exists, this does not mean that the technological approaches to magnetic reading is similar. For we and IBM have a very unique very exclusive and a very excellent way for reading magnetic characters. It is known as multi-channel reading. Mr. Rogers then recalled five reasons why banks are undertaking electronic programs. First, the growth in our economy. Second, rising costs. Third, the resulting increased paperwork. And, two really basic reasons, namely increasing your customer services and obtaining management facts on time. Mr. Charles Bash, manager of engineering, bank development program, then discussed IBM's approach to reading magnetic characters. He compared IBM's multi-channel reading head to the human method of reading by recognition of character shape even in a degenerated form. The unique IBM method, illustrated here by the digit eight, as it passes through the multi-channel head, utilizes storage and memory devices, such as those thoroughly proven in IBM computers. With the new equipment, stated Mr. Bash, IBM has been experiencing less than one-tenth of the reject errors allowed by ABA and IBM design objectives, and far less on substitution errors than the design limits of one document out of 100,000. In summary then, we selected a character sensing method which allowed for mutilation of characters or printing of inferior quality by taking into account the logical shape of a character in very much the same way that the human being does in reading. We feel that this will bring you reliability which cannot be achieved in any other way. On stage today, you see a sizable amount of IBM paper handling equipment and data processing systems. Actually, these machines consist of four separate systems in themselves. The new IBM proof inscriber was then demonstrated in action. Now, in addition to the proof inscriber's ability to sort, list, prove, and endorse in one simultaneous operation, the checks that you saw being processed were also being inscribed at the same high rate of speed. The next thing that the proof inscriber is doing is that it's actually printing in magnetic ink the amount in the location specified by ABA.
printing the process control code and the transaction code. All of this is done in magnetic ink. The most significant features of the new proof inscriber. Positive registration. Automatic inscribing. Accurate printing and selective inscribing. Simplified distribution. Constant control. Minimum rehandling. Package posting. Non-processable segregation and simultaneous machine function. Utility inscribers can actually inscribe magnetic characters on any location of a check. However, its principal function will be to inscribe checks with missing account numbers and to prepare carrier envelopes for mutilated checks. In this manner, the check and the carrier envelope then enter the system for automatic processing subsequent to this step. This then is the first step in automatic check handling. The second machine demonstrated was the IBM Sorter Reader. This is the fully transistorized IBM Sorter Reader. Let's watch it sort. Here's the explanation of a sorter reader in operation. Checks are fed into the machine by placing them on this elevator platform. This platform will contain over 3,000 items, and it automatically lists the items into the feeding area. When another batch or group of checks are ready for processing, we simply place them on the second platform. Perhaps you've noticed these flickering lights. Every character that is being read by the sorter reader is being visually displayed on the panel. Checks enter the machine at this point. The check then proceeds to the character sensing reader. It's here that we actually read the numeric character, direct the check through the chute blade and into the correct pocket. We call the IBM sorter reader a digital sorter because it sorts on an individual position within a given field. We may select a position and we can select a field. Today we are going to sort on the unit's position of the account number. Controls are engineered into the sorter reader to bring it to an instantaneous stop in the event of a jam. These controls are also present in each of the 13 pockets. We have just experienced a full pocket, and by removing the items, the machine is ready to resume sorting. Now perhaps an item only has six positions in it. The sorter reader will detect this and will direct the item that only contains six positions into the reject pocket. What is it that happens to the torn or to the mutilated item? And I think the best way to demonstrate this is to obtain some mutilated checks. From the pocket, we have selected an item. Take the item and we tear it. We will now place it into the machine. From the floor pocket is the mutilated document. As you have just seen, paper checks, punch card checks, and deposit tickets, all of varied sizes and thicknesses, all pre-printed with the prescribed ABA magnetic ink characters, were being sorted at the rate of 900 items per minute. I think these are just a few of the features which certainly make the IBM sorter reader the sorter reader for your bank.
Mr. Rogers pointed out that the proof inscriber and sorter reader form an adequate system for an initial application involving sorting alone. Yet this is only 25% of the overall bookkeeping job. Therefore, the next demonstration showed the linkage of the sorter reader to the IBM 407 accounting machine for listing and balancing purposes and a limited approach to demand deposit application. We're going to demonstrate the first example that you have seen of paper checks reading directly to a printer. To do so, the paper checks are placed in the feet of the sorter reader. And they're going to read through this control unit directly to what we call the 407 accounting machine. As the paper starts moving up through this machine, the checks that are being read into the sorter are being listed at the rate of 18,000 items per hour. On the screen, we have a sample of a package listing such as this. You'll notice that we have two neat columns as the checks are listed. To the left of each column is the account number. And then at the bottom in the right-hand corner, you see a dollar amount. And just to the left of that, 95, which is the item count. So now we've learned a second very significant thing about what we're doing, and that is that we can not only list checks, but we can accumulate checks, and we can take item counts. The most interesting use for medium and small banks of the sorter reader to 407 is to perform a complete deposit accounting function. One does not need a computer to perform deposit accounting. Therefore, we see the uses of the sorter reader to the 407. It lists, it totals, it posts to account balances, it allows you to compute service charges, and it can write uh, customer statements. Next, for the first time, the bankers saw paper checks going directly to magnetic tape records through the ability of the sorter reader to link itself to high-speed magnetic tape units. We're going to place the checks into the sorter reader to be read by this control unit and directly placed on the tape drive, as you see the, the reels revolving, we're recording any information desired from that check or all onto the magnetic tape at the rate of a slightly above 50,000 checks per hour. This container contains a reel of tape. This reel of tape will hold up to 80,000 checks that we use what we call a double read head. And a double read head means that as we record the check information on tape, we immediately re-read it. Notice the left man is writing, the little man on the right is reading. So that we are sure that what we've written on tape has been written validly. Once we can put this information on magnetic tape, we could use the 650 tape the 7070 and the 705. There's a system available for the specific volume that you have in your own account, in your own bank. Finally, the audience saw the complete demand deposit accounting job accomplished, as information was read directly from the check into an IBM data processing system. The one selected was the IBM 650 magnetic drum computer. You might think of the 650 as, as containing the standard operating procedures or the manual of instructions that your bookkeeper follows now to accomplish the man deposit job. Also in the system, in addition to the sorter reader, the 650 unit itself, is the card reader and card punch, where information can be entered into the system in the form of punch cards and new information punched out, also in the form of a punch card. And finally, to complete the system, the 407 accounting machine also linked into these other three units where we will produce the hard copy or printed information that is the result of your demand deposit job. Let's watch this complete electronic banking system in action. Notice the check being read in in the sorter reader into the 650 
the account balance feeding the information in, punching a card, and writing the journal in a trial balance. The information on the daily posting journal is shown here. The account number, the previous balance, today's items, the debits and the credits, the new balance on the account. And you'll also notice the asterisk in the upper right-hand corner here, which really makes this a real action report. They indicate exceptions to specific accounts, such as stop phase or holds or overdraft condition. This provides your operating people with the information that can start the wheels turning on each and every one of these situations to come up with the right answer. Now, in this approximately one minute, we have processed 100 or 200 transactions against 200 accounts of typical activity. Now, if you think about this, this is about one-tenth of the average bookkeeper's ledger in one minute. Every three-tenths of a second, we have updated, completely posted, an active account. Mr. Rogers summarized the demonstrations by pointing out that through the sorter reader's ability to link itself to any one of IBM's data processing systems, banks can now perform the complete demand deposit application from proving, to sorting, to rating, to posting, and the production of up-to-the-minute management reports. Mr. Dan Spina of the Magnetic Inks Engineering Department then reviewed the printing problems and IBM's plan of cooperation. He stated that IBM has conducted extensive engineering studies on the processes used for printing checks, has purchased carloads of checks, and visited bank check stationers all over the country. The result is complete confidence in the ability of printers to meet ABA requirements. Yet IBM is following a continuing program of cooperation. We will sit with you and your local printer and work out a system of inspection and reporting so that printing completely on target is achieved as soon as possible. We have field engineers who are visiting the local printer and making recommendations to the man on the press. Our goal is to ensure that all of us are assured that the best quality printing is achieved as soon as possible and on time. And what did the banking industry, as represented in Poughkeepsie, think of this premiere? Mr. Gable, we're very pleased to have you with us today. Nice and to we, we'd like very much to get your comments on the demonstration that you've just seen. Well, it was very impressive. Uh, I liked uh, particularly the frank way in which uh, Buck Rogers uh, and his associates told the story. Do you feel that... Uh, the talk that we had on the ability of the printers to meet the common language requirements will be interesting to banks? Yes, definitely, because there's a lot of mystery. We don't understand it, and this was very helpful to me. This is one of the most complete and best demonstrations that I have ever seen. I say that in all sincerity. But uh, I was frankly amazed at the ease with which you carried through your program on this 650 as a direct job. Well, I think it's most complete. I was quite amazed to see the whole thing tie in so beautifully from beginning machine, the sort of reader, right on through to the finished product. And impressed us very much. And I'm very happy to have our top management along with us today, our executive vice presidents and senior vice presidents. And just commenting a moment before we came out here, why they said, well, that, this looks like it's it. Manufacturers have now given to you the hardware which you have demanded. So I say the challenge is no longer with us, the challenge is now with you. We are making no shift in our responsibility, or we will do everything possible to guarantee a successful implementation of a magnetic character sensing program. But yet, gentlemen, it is you who must decide, it is you who must make the final decision. Thank you very much.